basically a cyber range is the cyber or network equipment of, of a firing range, right? It, it's a laboratory environment where you can accurately reproduce, you know, sort of massive internet scale positive and negative traffic, you know, good traffic and bad traffic, right? So that, that's what we're talking about when we talk about a, uh, a cyber range. And the way that these things uh, evolved, uh, and they sort of started off when the, the scale of, of threats and traffic was much smaller, when you had to model, I don't know, maybe a few hundred users or a few, you know, maybe a few thousand bad guys, was there, there was basically a one-to-one -one model between, uh, or a one-to-one -one relationship between what uh, you had in your lab and what you were trying to, to recreate. So if you wanted to emulate 100 attackers, you would set up 100 servers, right? Each one with its own operating system or browser and, and all of that stuff. And maybe you gain some level of efficiency, let's say with virtualization, so maybe now you could you know, gain an order of magnitude. You could put, you know, maybe it's 10 or even 100 attackers on one server, and so now maybe you can deal with things in the, in the thousands, which is all well and good, but in, a, in sort of the modern internet threat environment, you're talking about things like distributed botnets with millions or tens of millions of, of clients, and it's simply not feasible to think about building out a, a sort of legacy cyber range uh, to cope with that kind of scale. You'd need hundreds of feet of, of rack space and hundreds or thousands of servers, maybe tens of thousands, tons of money, tons of power, and just the massive overhead of trying to manage and cable and do software updates. It's it, that approach is no longer tenable mm -hmm. in the face of sort of the modern scale and threat. So what we're doing is, is, you know, we sort of looked at the way that things had been done, that one-to-one that -one modeling, and realized that it just, you know, it would no longer scale, it would no longer carry forward. And so now there are new uh, technology platforms and, and approaches that we can bring to bear on the problem. Part of this is based on recognizing that <coughs> if you want to sort of emulate a million, you know, bots or whatever, you don't actually need a million web browsers and a million copies of Windows 98, you know, that's still susceptible to infection, and a million, you know, versions of XYZ. All you really have to do is um, accurately model the behavior of those endpoints and the traffic coming from them. Right, you don't really need, you know, you don't need a million. You just need to be able to put on the wire traffic that looks exactly like, um, you know, the traffic coming from that. And then on the sort of on the other side, you don't need a million people making SIP phone calls or making valid web connections. You just need to be able to model that traffic and the behavior of the servers that they're talking to. Yeah. Right, you don't have to build all that out. You just have to be able to accurately model the traffic. And uh, this is like this is what Breaking Point does, right? I mean, this is our focus: is how do we do internet scale realism, um, you know, in a very compact, easy to use sort of form factor.